So thank you all very much for coming back to the Cherno Jono interviews. This next one is with Eat Fish and it's one of the responses from the Hydra interview where I asked for more of the good guy stories. And this interview is done over at Eat Fish's camp, which he's about to pick me up on his lovely little gas and take me over from the coast. Uh, so for privacy reasons, I guess we don't want to reveal his base, I will at some point just fade to black and then we'll pick it up when we're all set up there. It's quite an elaborate little setup he's got over there. Okay, so Eatfish, we're out here at your lovely little home um, in the middle of the woods at night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for agreeing for an interview with the Cherno Journo. Uh, why don't you tell me your story? You've got the hero skin now, but I hear that's not always been the case. Uh, no, I mean, I started uh, I started my life out as a pretty uh, pretty bad guy. I definitely, you know, came into this experience uh, thinking that every other player was meant to die by my hand, you know. And uh, I basically kill anything that moved. My first, uh, my first weapon, say a, uh, a Lee Enfield. Uh, at that point, I didn't really understand, you know, that there was high-end military weapons out there at all. I just, I thought the game consisted of getting a Lee Enfield and maybe a revolver and, and trying to kill anything that moved. Zombie person. Four didn't matter. I, I probably racked up about 150 so murders before I, I realized that there was more to the game than just uh, you know, hunting players. I was going to say, was there a particular moment that decided made you change this style of play, or did you just start getting bored with killing people? Uh, really, I was just getting bored with uh, hunting hunting humans. You know, like I said, when I started out, it was basically a Lee Enfield and a revolver, and, and I would make do with that. And then it turned into, you know, I figured out Northwest Airfield and and Star Sabor and chopper crashes and such had uh, pretty good guns to uh, do damage. So, you know, the first AS50 I got, I think I, I probably went a little trigger happy, and so I um. I think I killed about 30 people on Electro uh, Sniper Hill. Fresh spawns, people just trying to make do, try, trying to just, trying to get by. Crazy ours, you know? And so uh, when you were killing these people, did you feel any guilt or did you feel bad about the fact that they were fresh spawns and you were just taking them out with high-end gear? You know, at the time, not really. Now that I look back, I mean, I, I realized that, I see the error of my ways, it's basically a, uh, it's a survival game, and, and I was stopping people before they even had a chance, you know. They, they didn't even have a hatchet sometimes, or, you know. You take a DMR and sit up there at nighttime on a nighttime server back back then, when people actually, you know, ran around with their flashlights and chem lights and, and flares, trying to make the experience more enjoyable for themselves, and uh, use that as a, a beacon to rain down uh, death upon them. Uh, Basically, you know, like I said, uh, it, it just got it got pretty pretty old. Got tired of it, and I started to to wonder if there was more to the game than just uh, you know killing people. The game is open to so many different types of play styles. You know, be it, you want to be a bandit and kill everyone, that's fine. You want to be a, uh, a taxi driver who just drives around the coast and picks up new, you know, gives them weapons or whatever, or drives them around, that's fine a medic totally fine for example you you want to be a journalist you could be a journalist no basically just change it up and, and see what else this game has to offer besides just you know team deathmatch or just deathmatch if you will. around the time that all my real life friends decided that you know scripters and hackers were, were running the game which I agree with them on but still wasn't enough for me to you know quit for good so I uh I just took up I took up my rifle against banditry and, uh, you know, the collective effort of, of, of scripters to rope the game for everyone. And so, so what's your playstyle now? Now then? I basically, uh, currently I'm, I'm in a state of uh, killing bandits on the coast. Anyone who poses a threat to, to anyone in general, you know. And so how, you, how do you determine efforts. someone's a bandit? Do you just go off the skin or do you wait to see how they act? I mean, like, for example, the other day, I, I, every time I spawn, I pretty much just run around Cherno Electro and have a good time just trying to find randoms, trying to kill people who are trying to kill other people. 
I give everyone the benefit of the doubt now, scarf or no scarf, you know. I give everyone the benefit of the doubt. If you shoot at me, I probably will still not shoot back unless you're posing a threat. Like, if you're a terrible shot, I'll give you a few times to, to lower your weapon and stop and, and communicate, but if you're going to keep shooting, I'm, I have to, you know, I have to defend myself. I was in, uh, Electro. Female character just chasing me through the town, and we eventually basically cornered each other. She cornered me into the side rooms and, uh, trying to shoot me with a Makarov. I keep talking, I, I'm talking over the chat there, telling her, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a hero skin, like, I'm not going to kill you, like, you can leave here now, and you will survive, go on to, you know, ruin somebody else's day. <laughs> she took it upon herself to lay down in the hallway and wait for me to come out the door, so, fortunately, you know, I came out, she started shooting, I ran out the door, backed around behind her, and, uh, she was still laying on the ground for some reason, she, she, she had tried to turn and shoot me again, but, you know, she couldn't uh, actually turn. She was laying against the wall, so I really had no choice. Unload my MP5 into her back. I, I did feel bad about it, but I'm surprised that you actually waited so long. If she chased you around town to finally, you know, confront her. And I, I give, like I said, I give anyone the benefit of the doubt. Or any circumstance now, I've learned that uh, just because people are wearing headscarves doesn't actually mean that they're a bad person. In game or out of game, you know. Maybe they, they've killing people in self-defense and making them look bad, but I, I don't I don't discern that that's necessarily a bad player. After I killed that girl, I met two people wearing headscarves, not even three minutes later, that were uh, totally friendly, and we, we actually ran around Electro for about, you know, 30 minutes to 40 minutes before the inevitable scripter death. Coming way too common in this game. You know, it's still fun. 30 minutes at a time, eating randoms and having a, having a great time, laughing and in general, you know, playing with other bandits that not so friendly. So is this uh, pretty much a new play style now? You uh, walk around Electro and Cherno and police it, but also try to meet up with new players and have new experiences in DayZ? That, that I've just started doing recently. Like I said to you earlier, I was actually inspired by, uh, you know, your video of met the two random guys in the uh, cloud in Electro. If he could do it, then it's not impossible. I won't say that I have like a 100% success rate when doing it. I mean, probably 25 to 40% of the time, I just, you know, I get killed with no weapon in my hand or whatever the case may be. But it, it's it's the most gratifying play style I've, I've had in a long time. And what is it about Probably ever that playing this game? What is it about that playstyle that makes it so gratifying for you? I enjoy online communities. I enjoy, you know, really online gaming in general. So if I can meet random people that that are gonna you know, play along with me and, and have a good time, that to me is is one of the more enjoyable experiences in gaming. I can I can go play a number of other games that are just straight killing each other. This is, in essence, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, like I said earlier, every everyone has the opportunity to choose their own, you know, their own path in, in Trenaris. They don't they're not tied down to just bandit or a hero. There's so much gray area that that it's just an amazing thing. You know, I just love the freedom, basically. And so it sounds like you've definitely made DayZ your own story. It's now your story and your game, the way you play it. Yeah, I mean, right now my group is, is uh, you know, we've done the whole high-end gear thing, the whole low-end gear thing of just running around with a hatchet trying to lumberjack people. And uh, the middle ground in between those two is probably the, the most enjoyable. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, they got an AS-50 and an L-85, and... To survive and to preserve their, you know, their precious gear, they spend most of their time playing in the woods, just not doing anything really, you know? And I still think the coast has a lot of fun to offer, you know, a lot of people advise people to get off the coast right away. I don't think that, sh I don't think anyone starting this game or starting a fresh life to get off the coast, you know, you never know uh, what kind of interactions you'll have down there.
some good, some bad, but they're always uh, they're always interesting. So uh, Eatfish drove me off to my next interview, and I thought that he really had some very interesting things to say about the game. The fact that although you might start off as a bad guy, redemption really is possible, and you can be a hero in this game. And Rocket said it best when he said, "This is Daisy." This is your story. So I just say to people, make your story more interesting than just killing spawn noobs at Cherno Electro. This is the Cherno Journo. Out. <laughs>